Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be returning to Heroes of Normandy and in particular the excellent solo mode which I've been thoroughly enjoying, but I'm going to try something a little bit new this time. Now, since the last video series that I made, I've played the solo mode a couple more times, um, different scenarios, mostly from the um, Heroes of Normandy original core box, and they have been very enjoyable games. The more I've got used to the system, I hope in the correct manner, um, the more I've been enjoying it. But um, so far, I've only been playing scenarios where there's a specific objective. Now, usually this is either see something and carry it off the map, or bring a piece of equipment to a certain location, or seize and hold a, a, a geographic um, uh, area of the map, or, or, a, or a designated area of the map. But what I'd like to do today is um, do away with all of that. I've been having um, some very interesting exchanges with a couple of people recently, um, bo both uh, uh, about the solo system, but also new ways we, uh, 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 new directions we might take it in. And one of the things that we've been discussing, and the, these chats have been very interesting, is about how the solo system would cope without any objectives and, and just a pure meeting engagement, the kind of thing that, that Heroes of Normandy is actually really well geared to recreate. But how would the solo mode deal with it? Because, of course, so much of the solo mode's decisions rests upon having a specific objective that the AI has to converge upon. But what do you do when, when the enemy itself is the objective? So... I've been tinkering with a few ideas. I'm sure the rest of you have as well, but I just wanted to present my my thoughts and to give them a bit of a test run. I'm going to interrupt myself here with a little bit of a health warning for all of you. These ideas of mine are just that, ideas, and this setup I've done is very much a, a test run in the truest sense of the word, I have no idea whether any of these are going to prove to be a good idea. I hope they will, but there's every chance they won't. Um, and so if this game turns into an absolute train wreck, then I'll know maybe it's best to just stick to the uh, scenarios <laughs> when it comes to operating the solo mode. But I'd really like to see how it works. So what I've done is I've set up a scenario involving a meeting engagement between a Commonwealth force... Um, the Royal Winnipeg Rifles, and a German force on the northern edge of the map. It's the uh, our old friends from the 1st Battalion, uh, 901st Regiment, Panzer Grenadiers. And the way I'm going to guide the AI uh, is that I'm going to give them two tiers of objectives. When the scenario is first set up, the forces are effectively out of sight of each other. So initially, the AI's objectives are going to be the three tactical bonus markers uh, or tactical advantage markers that they will approach and attempt to seize. The moment they sight a um, British force or British unit, that is going to change and the British units themselves are going to become a sort of primary objective, uh, an objective to be destroyed. Um, while these become secondary objectives. And I'll do my best to guide the AI accordingly. Now, for the most part, this should be fairly simple. As with geographical objectives, the German units concerned will simply focus on the closest British unit. However, if there is some sort of tie, then I've evolved a, a, a very basic priority system based on how potent the enemy unit is. Um, and just to be clear on what I mean by that, I'm not just going by basic anti-infantry, anti-armour stats. I'm thinking about things like range and destructive power. So in the event of a tie, a German unit would prioritise trying to knock out my two-inch mortars because... Obviously, they represent a somewhat greater threat at long range, so it's in the Germans' interest to eliminate them first. And we're going to play up to the point where one force would break. So those are the victory conditions. 
if I hover close to the unit boards here, you can see that the AI would need to break three of my units in order to win the scenario, whereas I would need to break four of theirs to achieve the same sort of result. I think this is reasonably fair. It also does away with the problem whereby, of course, the AI under certain circumstances gains a continuous stream of reinforcements. So this is a fairly long scenario I've set at seven turns because it's a bigger map. But I think there has to be some sort of cap other than the turn limit. So if I can eliminate four German units, then that gives me a solid win, I hope. So I won't spend too long talking about the process of setting up the solo game because I've already done that in a previous video and I don't want to bore you guys rigid talking about it again. The only thing I will say, because I'm doing something slightly differently, is that with regard the danger markers on the dashboard, those of you who are familiar with the solo mode are probably wondering why I've stacked all these danger markers in the holding box. The reason for that is, uh, once more randomly determining the nature of my opponent, I have come up with a German AI that is balanced. Now in the case of balanced AIs, at the beginning of the game, you draw one of these counters from a mix of the aggressive and defensive AI tokens and you place it. Now, I don't really like this. The reason being that as you grow more familiar with the game, depending on whether you have an aggressive or a defensive token, it's a bit easier to tell what, what sort of um, opposition or increased potency the AI will benefit from as the danger level increases. So I'm doing it slightly differently. As the danger level increases, hopefully as I obliterate enemy units, I hope, once it reaches the appropriate threshold, I will simply put all of these counters in a bag and draw one. So the idea behind that is that I will not know precisely what's going to come my way in terms of improved AI play until the moment that it actually happens. So, I think the only thing that remains for me to do is to say a word about the opposing forces before I um, commence the game. Let's just have a look at the Brits. Get you centred. There we are. <clears throat> so this is the very basic infantry formation from the Royal Winnipeg Rifles. I've Lieutenant Henry over there, fairly standard officer as they go. I have the normal fire team. I have the leader team, which is a slightly more capable assault unit. I have the Bren gun team, which are pretty decent as far as machine guns go. The only thing is their firepower is a bit weak compared to the German MG42. But, you know, they do have the opportunity fire ability and they have the assault capability. So they're not bad. My biggest advantage, of course, is the reach afforded by my two inch mortar. That is something I'm going to be relying on pretty heavily to damage the Germans as the scenario progresses. Now, moving over to the opposition, numerically, this force is fairly similarly sized to mine. We have a recon unit there. Um, I know they're a recon unit because I had to separate them out. We've got four units there whose exact nature I do not know, although it's possible one of them is a decoy. The one that I wasn't sure what to do with is that one over there. Now that is not a recon unit despite the unit back. It is in fact that most curious of German light vehicles, the Zundap. 
And I was a bit unsure of what to do with this because the rules do say you can put the Zundap in the reinforcement bag. It's probably the only vehicle that can go into the bag. But in terms of deploying it as a vehicle, um, I think it's a bit open to interpretation. Now, I had two choices here. I could either deploy it on its face upside or deploy it in its concealed mode. Now, after a bit of umming and aahing about this, I decided it would be better for the AI if I began it on its concealed side. Now, the rationale behind this is, I really ought to justify it as I've made the decision for the AI, is that they would be approaching this area cautiously, not wanting to attract too much attention as they move in. And of course, a unit on its concealed side is impervious to mortar fire. So if I'd, if I'd come in with the Zundap on its exposed side, you know, motor roaring and all that, the noise would probably give my mortar boys some vague coordinates to, uh, to at least attempt a ranging shot with, and that does present a bit of a risk. However, having it sacrificing the available speed of the face-up side by having it approach much more cautiously is probably the more sensible thing to do at this stage of the battle. So that's why I've done that. So it's turn one of seven. I'm just going to zoom out so that we have a slightly better view of the battlefield as a whole. Um, I will be zooming in as appropriate to uh, catch up on significant events and similar. <clears throat> as ever, please excuse me. I seem to be fighting off something of a winter bug and uh, I think it hasn't entirely left me yet. So if I do get a bit croaky over the course of this narrative, I do beg your pardon. Right. So we're set up. It's the beginning of the orders phase. I'm just going to take a quick glance at the cards that I have in my starting hand. All of these are pretty good. That one's going to be particularly valuable. Um, yes, I like the look of this. The Germans, of course, start by getting a free action card, which they will put to one side. So I know they've got an assault bonus in their um, ready use action card pile. So now it's the orders phase. I think this is a bit of a tough one. I definitely want to move my Bren up quickly to achieve a fairly dominant position. I also have my eye on trying to seize that tactical advantage and the Bren team, with their speed of four, are able to achieve that. One, two, three, four, on turn one. I don't think any of the German units would be able to reach that to contest it. So I'm going to do that. And I think another sensible move might be... to have my leader team go forward as well. If I judge this properly, they'll be able to take up an equally good position over there, hopefully able to dominate this area. We'll see. So I've placed my order tokens. The German force doesn't yet have any um, order tokens that it's able to deploy. It has no units with the um, autonomous trait. I know that because I organized their force at the beginning. <laughs> <clears throat> so at the moment, they're only going to be reacting to what I do. So as per the solo rules, I'm going to activate my Bren team. But before they do anything, the Germans will react. And we have got... Ooh, okay. That is, let me just double check. So, the first of those means an AI unit would take a firing action in response. Now, luckily for me, none of them can actually see me, so that doesn't happen. 
they also gain an order token because the difficulty is medium. Had the difficulty been easy, that would have been no, um, no effect, no action. But they do get an order token. And it makes most sense from the AI's perspective and also paying due attention to the logic tree which I've placed off map where I can see it to give the order token to that unit because in terms of its objectives that unit is the best place to try and seize one of those. So I shall move my Bren team up one, two, three, four and as they move up I will have them deploy into their firing mode. And hopefully we will see what that is come the uh, supply phase. Now over to the Germans because they now have uh, an order token on that unit. They have a couple of choices. They could reach that or they could reach that. Now it depends on how much of a risk the AI is willing to take. At the moment, there's nobody who can fire at them because they've made their move. No other allied unit can see them. That unit doesn't possess moving fire, so there's no immediate threat. But it does depend on how brave they're feeling because they will be risking the continued existence of a unit. Now, according to the logic tree, I should prioritise an approach which affords them cover. So they are going to do that. They're going to move forward and occupy that little bit of um, hedgerow there. And it gives, leaves them in a very good position to try and seize that advantage token at the end of the turn. So moving back to me, going to make my second activation. The Germans will, of course, react. Ooh, suppressive fire. Now, again, none of the German units is actually in a position to see the unit that I've activated. So nobody can attempt to um, suppress it, luckily for me. Um, also, they would draw a card if the difficulty setting was hard, but it's not. So I breathe a huge sigh of relief. And that card just goes. Now, what to do with that lot? One, two, three. Ah, oh, they can make it. Brilliant. Bit of sidestepping. And they have taken up their position in the hedgerow. And that is the end of the orders phase. So now we get to the beginning of the supply phase. I get to move my units first. I'm quite happy with the mortars where they are. They can reach the entirety of this board and there's no point exposing them unnecessarily to German fire. I do want to try and get someone up to that um, supply crate supply crate, tactical advantage, whatever it is. But this is going to take some rather bold manoeuvring. I am going to chance playing an advance card on my fire team. And they're going to go one, two, three, four. I won't advance them further than that, so that last movement point is wasted, but it just puts them where I need them to try and contest that advantage. And lastly, hmm, what to do with my officer? I think I'm going to move him one, two, three, four. I'll get him into the hedges as well. The cover is good there. And he has some limited ability to see what's going on. I mean, they're not going to stay out there for too long, to be perfectly honest. So that's me done. Over to the Germans. Mm. 
that unit there cannot actually reach that area to contest it, to, to contest the tactical advantage. So what it's going to do is the next best thing. It's going to advance into a position that affords it good cover, but puts it in a good place to do some shooting next turn. As for this one, there's not that much that it can usefully do. So similarly, it's going to advance and put itself into cover. That one back there, it's another fairly easy decision. Sorry, I was just digging around for an activation token. Now you might question my um, tactic of grouping them together so closely when the AI normally dictates that you should space them out a bit. My reason for doing this is that because their objective is to destroy my force, they want to concentrate as much available firepower as they can on the units they can see. True, there is cover over here, but it's a copse of trees which offer much weaker protection whereas there's much better protection to be had in that hedgerow. So I am packing them into the hedgerow, but there is a sensible reason for it. And as for this last figure here, I think it's best in the interests of spreading out a little to go that way. So they've not sacrificed any mobility, but they have spread out a little bit from their fellows. So there's only that little dangerous concentration there that they have to worry about. And they are still roughly moving in the direction of the objective. Uh, so they're not really compromising the AI. Again, it returns to the guiding principle of this, um, the solo mode, which is that if the logic tree would cause the AI to do something suboptimal, and this is very much a subjective matter of opinion, then don't do it. Override the AI and do something sensible with them. Now, the last question the AI faces is what to do with the Zundat. Should it move forward at a snail's pace, or should it reveal itself now and open the throttle? I think given the proximity of that unit there, opening the throttle might be a good idea. So it's going to go into bike mode, if I can call it that. Go one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I'm going to put it there. No. There's a tough question here. If I put it there, it's in a good position to potentially flank the British. Pass through this relatively easy terrain and get into my rear and threaten my mortars, or it could focus on the most immediate target. Or it could compromise by tucking itself in behind the tree line, but then that imposes a firepower uh, modifier on it if it shoots through the tree, so that's also a bit suboptimal. I think, on balance, the best thing might be to just park it there, where it's got a fairly commanding view. Let's see, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't want to get too close. Having it there might throw off any mortar rounds a bit, but it lines it up rather nicely, certainly to threaten that unit. So with hopes that the AI will forgive me if that turns out to have been a bad decision, 
I shall do that with the Zunda. And so now we're all in positions to claim our little prizes. Let's see what we've got. Ah, the Germans have a tactical bonus. That'll give them deployable orders from the start of their next turn. That's not such good news for me. It means they're going to become a lot more active. As for myself... Oh, I have a tactical bonus too. That's nice. I will, I will take that extra star. Thank you very much. And what is the last one? Ah, the skull means reduce the danger level. Unfortunately for me, that then has no effect. Because presently, the danger level is still at one and it can't go below one. That is a shame. I seized that one just a little bit too early, but I had no way of knowing what it was, so it was worth checking out. Just a bit of a pity, really. It's nice to be able to shoot up the opposition without twitching their danger level, but there we go. So we've claimed all of those. The next thing to check is who can now see whom. That unit is still concealed and chooses to remain so, quite sensibly. Because it is, after all, in, in the middle of what's going to be a bit of a shooting gallery soon. Um, these units are all within my line of sight, these three, so they're all revealed. Ah. That is the German officer, Oberleutnant Hauser. Let's place him there. Over here, we have a unit. So, what unit have we got? Just grab the unit bag and hope this isn't a nasty surprise. Oh, oh, okay. We have an MG42. Uh, and we are going to say... I probably should have done this earlier when they first moved into position and became visible. Sorry about that. It's only him who gets resolved because it's a special uh, at this stage in the turn because it's a special ability. So I am going to say that the MG42, when they moved into position, they deployed machine gun side up because that would be the sensible thing to do rather than just standing around in the hedgerow like dummies. And the last unit is a decoy. Okay, they weren't overstacking after all. They knew what they were doing. They, they're more spread out than I gave them credit for. Okay. Well, that clears up the tactical picture just a little. So I'll reclaim the orders token. I'm quite happy about the fact that I have three orders per turn now, although slightly less happy that the Germans have matched my sudden burst of tactical acumen. Let's just get these activation tokens back. And the very last thing to do is to draw a card. I quite like all three of these cards, so I'm going to keep them. And, ah, that could be very handy. Good card to have. And that is the end of turn one. So a surprising amount has happened. Um, I'm happy with the positions we've taken up, but I am very worried about my fire team, which is stuck out in the middle there. Um, I'm going to pull them back into some kind of cover as quickly as I can, because that is not a happy place for them to be. Um, on the German side, they're set up quite nicely for their purposes. Their recon unit is stuck out in the middle, but none of my units can see them, so really, I can't do much to them. They have the Zundap out there, and I don't have very much that can actually hurt it. Um, my men do have some. It's rather weak. They do have some anti-vehicle capability, 
but it isn't that great. And the other problem is I have a terrible choice because if I shoot and take out the juicy target represented by the, the Zunda, A, there's no guarantee I'll destroy it, and B, pausing to shoot means that we're left out there in that vulnerable place. Because, of course, it's not just the Zunda we're worrying about. We have a rather fierce German officer just over there. We have an MG42 crew just over there. And the Germans have brought grenades to the party. And we are pretty much just within grenade range. So all in all, I think we want to get out of there. Avoid casualties first, inflict casualties later, I say. Because there's no way we can take out all the threats before they do something horrible to us. So anyway, orders phase. Unsurprisingly, my first order is going to be given to them. My second order, I think, really ought to go. Hmm, tough choice. I'm tempted to give it to the Brens, but they're a bit far away. I might actually give my second order to... I'll give it to that fire team over there. Sorry, the leader team. And my third order will go to my mortars. Now, on the German side, in terms of fulfilling their mission of doing horrible, horrible things to uh, a British unit. I'm going to give the order token to the MG42 team. Now that's not quite in keeping with the logic tree. So I'm going to explain my rationale there are German units without suppressed markers that are close to objectives, closer than the MG42 team, but in this case, rather than a fixed position that you advance and take, the objective that's nearest to them is a target to be destroyed. And my reasoning behind giving the order token to the MG42 team is that they have the greatest firepower, and depending on what the British do, they're in the best position to damage them. And if that unit somehow moves out the way, they're in the best position, again, to deal damage to other British units. So they get the order token. Also, because it's the beginning of the orders phase, the Germans get another action card. Ah, OK. That will definitely help the Zundap depending on what it decides to do this turn. So... I think that's pretty much it for the moment. Right, my lot. We're about to move, but let's see what the Germans do by way of reaction. Oh, OK. Um, we move the danger marker one space up. That is not so good, but at least the Germans are not yet going to be receiving um, any of these bonuses. The danger marker has to move up a bit further for that to happen. And it does mean I get to make a clean getaway. So, hmm, where to move? I think... One... Two, three. Let's just back into the woods for now, because that will put an awful lot of foliage between us and the Germans. And I'm also in a position to try and fend off that Zundap if it tries anything on the next turn. So over to the Germans, because they have an order token. So they're slightly frustrated MG42, 
seeing that the um, their initial target has sneaked away from them, are going to try and target that team. And from this distance, they're going to attempt a kill shot rather than a suppression, because after all, they're here to kill my units. So here we go. Ooh, they've just rolled a five which unfortunately for me ah i wonder if this is worth doing i think i will thank the helmet because they would have inflicted damage on me but i am happy to just take a suppression marker instead So I will take my suppression marker and the dreaded MG42 has done its thing for the turn. Unfortunately, this now means that my guys are a bit less capable than they would have been. I'm not really sure. Ah, solution presents itself to victory. I will take away that offensive suppression marker and we will, hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're within easy range. They're slightly easier to damage than the German officer. So I will first endure the German reaction, whatever that's going to be. Oh no, reinforcements. I wonder who's going to join the party. Let's see. What have we got? A fire group. Okay. Could be worse. I mean, to be honest, anything is bad at this stage. I'm going to place them. Sorry, let's just move the camera up. I'm going to place them in their deployment area there. Because that is roughly... Um, center so it gives them the most options for maneuvering and they also start off in cover so it gives them the most choices when they make a move during the supply phase um, and just to make my life even more of a misery the Germans get another action card oh that is not nice oh my gosh I thought I had an advantage bringing a mortar along to the party. They've just revealed that they've got an even bigger one. That is a worry. Okay. Right, now that they've just scared the pants off me by revealing that their mortar is probably just as potent as mine, <laughs> if not more... <clears throat> Excuse me if not more so, I'm going to try taking my shot at their machine gun team. I rolled a five for a total of seven, which just equals their defensive strength. That is excellent because that means my counter fire has just wiped out their machine gun team. Even better, I now have the first of four units, unit kills that I need to try and win the scenario. Unfortunately for me, the danger marker goes up just enough to trigger the drawing of the yellow danger token. So I have a bag, which is completely inappropriate for this game, but no matter. Let's riffle these guys around and let's see what the AI is now capable of. When assaulting, AI units get a plus one bonus to their dice roll if they are the attacker. Right, boys. As far as possible, let's keep the enemy at arm's length for this one. Okay, that was quite a good turn for us. 
I mean, it's still ongoing. Um, the Germans don't have any more order markers in play. So I am going to activate my mortar next. Of course, there is every possibility that AI will say no. More reinforcements? Blimey. They're keen. Oh no, Panzer Shrek. Although, mind you, to be fair, these guys are not so good against infantry. In fact, they're rather terrible against infantry. So, okay. That is not as worrying as it could have been. And these gentlemen will arrive and deploy over there. Unfortunately for me, the Germans get to place another order token. And it's one that they'll be able to play immediately. Now I have a choice. I could give this order token to the Zundap or to Hauser. Both would end up generating equal amounts of firepower against their target. Um, in Hauser's case, he would be aiming for the leader team because he can see them most clearly. In the Zundap's case, it's got a clear line of sight to my Bren gun team, although the range is rather great, so they would suffer a penalty for the distance. Um, that's a difficult one to resolve. So I'm going to go down, actually there's not even much help going down the firepower route because they throw out an equal amount. So what I'm going to do is roll off for it. On a one, two or three, Hauser will take a shot. Ah, I've just realized. Yes, he can. Sorry, silly me. One, two or three, it'll be Hauser. Four, five or six, the Zundap. And it's going to be Hauser. So he will open fire on that group. And he rolls a one, luckily for me. So, yes, firepower of three altogether doesn't bother them in the slightest. Phew. And now my mortar can take a shot. I could lob a shell at Hauser. Because it would be tempting to try and deprive the Germans of most of their command and control at one go. But it would equally be very satisfying if I could land a mortar round on the Zundap. They're of course impervious because they're concealed, as are that unit over there. Or I could alternatively try and throw a shell in the direction of the reinforcements that I can hear arriving. But if I do that for the sake of killing the new arrivals, maybe, I'm leaving that thing free to wander around. I think... it may be worth trying to decapitate Hauser. So I'm going to aim there. And we'll make our roll. And it's a one, so we deviate quite massively. All right, that was a bit of a wasted shot. My mortar rounds land beyond Hauser, and he breathes a sigh of relief. So that's that for the orders phase. Um, also, apologies, everybody. I have just realized I forgot to play that when the AI should have enjoyed it um, as their next um, attack option. However, I do have this card. So in the interest of fairness, I am going to say they would have played it 
I would have instantly cancelled it and they would have taken their shot in a different manner. Okay, so we're into the supply phase again. I'm going to leave my Bren gunners where they are, because I'm quite happy with that position, although that Zundup still poses quite a real threat to them. Um, I'm similarly happy with where the officer is, because I don't think there's any point in moving him from his current position. Now for the Germans... At present, the Zundup definitely wants to move. Whether to move that unit is more of a difficult question because they're not very strong. But they probably do want to get into the fight. So... Let me just see. The Zundup's closest opposing unit is the fire team. So if they go one, two, three, four. Hmm. I think if the Zundup parks itself there, it places itself in a nice position because with its heavy firepower, it can still threaten the fire team a bit, and it also has some partially obstructed line of sight to the mortar team. But of course, it probably wants to eliminate the fire team before it starts trying to circle round and do silly things, because if it comes round to this clear area down here, it risks destruction for no real gain, except for the vague chance of getting a bead on these guys. And um, besides, if it came in too early, I could also order them to just fall back into the hedge. It would mess up their turn, but at least they'd be intact. So I think, and again, I hope the AI will forgive me if this is a bad choice. I will place him there. And I think because the Germans have so many assault bonuses... It does make sense for them to come forward, but then again, these guys are quite a weak unit and they don't have an assault bonus. So what I'm going to do, they can't stay there equally because they'll come under fire. Um, oh no, they won't actually, they're concealed. But they may as well not be there unless they join in the fight somehow. So what I'm going to have them do is they'll flip from their concealed side to get the extra movement. And go one, two, three, four to get into some very decent cover down here. And now they're really starting to threaten my flank because we have both the Zundap and the Recon group down there. And what will happen here is that this group coming up can now occupy the cover that they've just vacated. As for the German reinforcements, I'm going to bring them forward as rapidly as I can to try and reinforce this place. Now these guys are a bit problematic because they can't really do much to influence the battle. Um, as you may have seen, their speciality is actually tank killing and blowing holes in, in structures. Um, what I did when I chose the reinforcements for the German side was I randomly selected from this particular unit. So unfortunately for them, these guys are slightly inappropriate as reinforcements go. Um, so their best bet might actually be to stay where they are because they're impervious to everyone up there except my mortar. And to be perfectly honest with you, my mortar has far worthier targets to occupy it down here. 
So I think that will settle it for the Germans. Sorry, pardon that, my cat. He's uh, offering me tactical advice. Yes, thank you, Oscar. I think I came to that conclusion already. So that's the movement side of the orders phase. Uh, sorry, the um, supply phase. The only thing to do is reveal this unit, which is now hove into view of mine. And it is a unit. Let's see what we get. A fire group. Okay. That's rather less welcome than the Panzer Schreck group. Because that's some decent fire, the germ firepower that the Germans have got there now. So the last thing I shall top up my hand, which is now sorely depleted. Ah, oh, these are all rather good. I particularly like the burst into action one. That could prove useful on the upcoming turn. And that is the end of turn two. So the situation so far, the balance of casualties has favoured the British overall. Um, we haven't lost any units, which is a really great start. The Germans have lost their MG42 unit, which is a bit of a blow for them. However, while I've been holding this little corner of my map, the Germans have been far more proactive and they've been keeping some kind of pressure on my front while quite swiftly moving units round to flank me. I will be worrying about the safety of my mortar unit in the upcoming turn because uh, if things don't go according to plan, yes, thank you, Kat. If things, oi, I'm trying to, trying to hold a tactical briefing here, damn it. Um, if things do not go according to plan, a giant tail will come along and sweep the board. No, not really. If things don't go according to plan, I could lose that unit and I don't want that to happen. But I'm going to pause there because I realise I've been going on for quite a while now. So I'll stop this video here at the conclusion of turn two and hopefully the next time I will be able to pick up where I left off, play the game through to its conclusion and we'll see how we get on. So as ever, it only remains for me to thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate your company. I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone for all the lovely comments I got on the previous um, video series um, relating to the Heroes of Normandy solo mode. You were all really, really kind. I appreciate every bit of feedback I get. And I especially appreciate the people who take the trouble to... Um, point out where I've gone slightly astray, or perhaps in some cases majorly astray. It really helps my game, it makes me become a much better player than I am, and it's all very welcome. And you guys are such a great community, it's a really, really great thing to have you along for the ride on these videos. So, as ever, a massive thanks to my veterans who follow um, my videos, and to any newcomers who might be here for the first time, a warm welcome to you. Um, if, you're, if you're here for Heroes of Normandy, I've got other videos on this channel. Um, or if you're interested in wargaming in general, please have a look at some of the other games I've reviewed and looked at. You're more than welcome. But to all of you, a really huge thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. As ever, thanks for your company and thank you for tuning in. Bye.